Today we're going to be making uh, individual turkey meatloaves with a red pepper jelly glaze on top. So we're going to start by heating up our pan over medium low and I'm going to go ahead and add a little olive oil to it. And then I'm going to put a red onion in it really just doing the red onion for color. Um, you can do any onion you want. Uh, I am using, you can see it's a fairly small onion that I'm using. That is making me tear up. And our pan's not quite hot enough, so I will go ahead and start chopping up the garlic. So turkey, not quite, like ground turkey is just not quite as flavorful as ground beef would be. Um, I mean, it's definitely got flavor to it. It tastes like turkey. A lot of folks are, you know, I don't know, I, I, I often hear like, there's no flavor with ground turkey and that's, I mean, it, it, it tastes like ground turkey, which is good, it's a flavor that I like, but it's not as flavorful as ground beef. Uh, doesn't quite have just as much going on with it, but kind of make up for that by adding extra to it. So we're gonna do a little more garlic. I'm doing three cloves. These are all pretty big cloves though, so it's probably more like five cloves. Um, but gonna add a good bit of garlic. We're gonna do, I with my normal meatloaf, I do generally like a green bell pepper, just bell pepper. Um, not always green, but often it is a good time to use green pepper. Um, but instead of bell peppers, I am gonna use roasted red peppers. I've got a jar that I'm kind of wanting to use up. Uh, those don't last forever. And in and, and all honesty, I'm pretty bad about opening a jar of roasted red peppers and then just letting them sit in there for too long. So opened one, I don't know, three weeks ago maybe. So my goal is just to Get it used and in the future go through them a lot more quickly than I than I have been. Okay. I'm gonna turn the heat up on this just a little bit. This little like eye, it takes, sorry, you can see it better. It takes a while to get heated up, but once it gets going, like it gets a lot hotter than I expected it to if you've got the right size pan on it. I've put pans that were way too big on it and man, it did not, did not want to heat up. All right, so my hands are all sticky from the garlic, so I'm just gonna rinse off and clean up a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Got a good sizzle, adding my onion to the pan and I will go ahead and get my garlic ready to go in, but I'll give it a minute before I put it in. And we're not really looking to get a lot of caramelization or a lot of color on the onions. I really just want, on any, any of the vegetables, I really just want to get them softened. Okay, so kind of flatten them out. Let it go. All right, so I will get to work on my roasted red peppers. So with my roasted red peppers, when I open the jar, I think it's such a huge, it's a, it's a gigantic jar. It's like 30 ounces. Um, it comes with four. There's usually four really, you're gonna see really, really large peppers in it and they're whole peppers so they're not like pre-cut into strips or anything um i think in the future i'll probably just put them in a smaller 
George Orr and see how that works. But you can see uh, there's like fat on the top. So when I open these, they're in water and I take out what I need and then I pour olive oil on the top of it all floats up to the top and then in the refrigerator it solidifies so it just creates like a little cap on top of the peppers they're all underneath it um because once you start taking them out of here like they float to the top more because you've got less peppers packed in there um but it just helps seeing how fast it heats up i can turn it down already um turn that down a good bit Anyway, so just kind of putting that little like oil cap on the top of it gives me a little more longevity. Uh, with these, I found out a few times that if you, any peppers that are over the surface of the water, like in a few weeks, it's probably okay in the fridge, but like if you leave them in there too long, they taste like battery acid and they've definitely gone bad. I made a whole pizza and like several, like one section of the pizza was just like the pet, like you couldn't, I mean, they would, you couldn't, one bite, you knew it was not something to consume. It was not only gross, but you knew it was going to hurt your stomach, but it's, I, it's because of the peppers had gone bad. So anyway, always do the little bit of oil on top just to get a little more time out of them, but probably best to just go ahead and use them up. So I want to dry these off a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead, get my garlic in. And then I'll add a little salt and pepper. Season as you go. I'm actually gonna add a little bit more oil to this. and I turn the heat way down so I don't burn that garlic. Okay, so I'm gonna fish these out with a fork. And I know the olive oil on top, it, it's, it makes it look disgusting. Cold olive oil that's solidified like that always looks super gross. Nothing wrong with it though. Okay, so I've already used two of these peppers, so this jar must have had five in it, but like this is one pepper, you know, and it's doubled, it's folded in half, it's just hollow in the center. That's the longest one. I mean, here's another one. So there are these huge peppers that come in these jars. So it's a great, it's a great value. Anyway, I uh, just wanna blot them off a little bit. Not a lot, I just don't want to introduce a ton of water into my dish. And then I'm just going to run my knife through them. So just once down the middle. And a course. garlic in there. I'll just go ahead and add my peppers in. Okay, so I'll give those just a tiny little, little mix and then I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce to it, breadcrumbs, and of course the turkey. I'll do the turkey last just because, oh, and an egg. Turkey and egg last just because they're the messy, messy. Okay, so breadcrumbs. I've got some homemade breadcrumbs, which for me, I just save up. Like, you know, when the bread gets stale, the ends of the bread, or I mean, any kind of bread we have that we don't eat uh, in enough time and it starts to go stale, I stick in the freezer. And then when I get a bag full of it, 
I run it all through the, I let it thaw and then run it through my food processor. If it's not, if some of it doesn't really seem hard enough, doesn't actually seem stale, I will bake it in the oven at like 200, 250 for a few minutes just to help dry it out. Then I'll put it in the food processor. So, and then I'm always just sticking it in my freezer bag. So I always have homemade breadcrumbs on hand, um, which is nice. If you don't have homemade, you can definitely just use, I would probably put in panko breadcrumbs. Um, you could use rice in this. I have made plenty of turkey meatloaves before that have rice in them. Um, you can put in, I'm gonna add a little Worcestershire to this. I've heard you can do oats. I've never done that, uh, but definitely something I'd like to try at some point. Go ahead and get the egg in. And I'm just using a pound of very inexpensive ground turkey. All right, I'm gonna try to do this. I might end up having to use my hands, we'll see. Yeah, that's, that's pointless. So wash my hands just cause I have touched the raw turkey a little bit. I wanna go ahead and add salt and pepper though. Okay, and you don't wanna over mix this. You really just want to make sure everything comes together and it's definitely a lot of pepper I could have cut back on some of that pepper but it's gonna taste great Okay, so here we go. So we've got all of it in the bottom and you can see it is a little pepper heavy. Um, probably should have used one less pepper, but I was, you know, kind of wanting to use them up. So alas, um, I'm gonna go ahead and score it just like Rachel Ray taught us how to do, right? Score it into however many loaves you're eventually gonna make. And then I'm gonna wash up and get my pan spray. I can't touch anything yet. Ah. Okay, just wanna get this spray with some nonstick spray. And then I'm gonna divide it into four loaves, bake it at 400 until the internal temperature is 165, uh, which I will, we're, we're gonna have this later tonight. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. But uh, it's gonna be, I would say, 30 to 40 minutes is how long it's gonna bake. Um, I have it written down and I'll definitely, that's included in the recipe. But um, yeah, once I get these done, I'm gonna pop them in the fridge until later tonight and then we'll make the red pepper uh, glaze to go on top, which is probably not nearly as fancy as it sounds. Okay. So just shaping them into kind of little football shapes, really, little ovals, roughly the same size. I can tell this one's a good bit bigger than that one was. And these are going to be, these are going to be so good. I'm really looking forward to this. I've made turkey meatloaves before, different recipe, not like this. Made turkey meatloaves before though, made regular meatloaf. And I actually, I don't know, the, the recipe I've used in the past for turkey meatloaf is really good. And it actually, it usually has rice in it, like I mentioned. Um, it's kind of like a like low calorie recipe. These are actually, I'm gonna reshape this first one. It has, it's much smaller. Um, so much for scoring it. Ah! Can add a little. No, that one's good. I'm gonna leave it. 
I'm just gonna reshape this one. It looks the same size, but it just felt so much smaller when I was putting it together. Um, anyway, uh, the other turkey recipe, it's our turkey meatloaf recipe I've made. It's kind of a low calorie one, so it uses like brown rice and a ton of vegetables in it, but it's really nice and flavorful. And my favorite part is actually uh, leftovers and making meatloaf sandwiches. That's, that, that is, that is the best. Um, my, um, my regular like beef meatloaves, I will do them instead of ketchup. I'll use brown sauce, which is like a British condiment that I sometimes find at the grocery store. Um, not all grocery stores sell it. And sometimes I just find it like around Christmas too, but it looks like ketchup, but like a dark, it looks like a brown version of ketchup. And to me, it tastes a lot like ketchup with like Worcestershire sauce in it. I think if you mix ketchup and Worcestershire together, you'd probably have brown sauce, but I'll top them with that. And that is really, really, really good. Um, I am going to clean up, get this in the refrigerator, wash my hands, and then come back and we'll make the sauce to top these. Okay, so I'm gonna make the glaze for the uh, the turkey meatloaf. So I'm gonna start with ketchup. It is still gonna be ketchup based. I just want to, I've got the tiniest little amount. I've got two, maybe three, probably two tablespoons of red pepper jelly uh, left and I just want to get the jar used up. So I'm gonna do about two tablespoons. I'm not gonna measure it but prop equal parts. Should have just mixed it all in the jar. Didn't think about it till it was already gotten the bowl dirty. So I am just gonna scrape all of this out. You could use green pepper jelly. That would be good too. Don't think that there is honestly that big of a difference in the two. And then I will let the meatloaves cook. Once they get about halfway through, uh, I will brush a little bit of this mixture on top. I want to save the remainder of the mixture to brush on right before you eat. But I do want to go ahead and just get it a little bit on just to start with. Okay, I don't think I can get any more out of that. Oh, oh, a little bit. Okay. Thought I had a little more than that. All right, so I'm just gonna mix them together. That's it. And then I will just stick this in the refrigerator and when I make those meatloaves tonight, like I said, I'll brush some on about halfway through cooking and then save the rest. Um, save the rest for when they're done. And this really just looks like ketchup. Honestly, everything in it is red, so not a not a great look, or not a, a different look than just squirting them with ketchup would have been. Okay, that's it. So I will bring you guys back later uh, when we cook them. So until then.